DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet, Junior Smith, and currently a top five defense. The Seattle Seahawks have the talent to make a big playoff push this season. And the man to tie it all together is offensive coordinator Shane Waldron. So Colt McCoy, pull us into the quarterback room. What do you like and maybe even love so much about Shane Waldron's play calling? Shane Waldron has it dialed in right now. Let's watch this first third down, third and four. They motion the running back back into the backfield to give you a, a man's own tell, right? Browns try to kind of disguise it, whatever, but you know this is man coverage. I mean, locked up, locked up, locked up. Okay, we're pretty good. Safety's rolled down. He's here. I love this design by Shane. Always thinking outside the box. How can I get my players, you know, open, especially off of press coverage? That's what a lot of offensive coordinators try to do is like, if you're going to get true press tight coverage, like some guys aren't great at getting off releases. Like how can I create the best release, the best way to get off press coverage? Um, sometimes you'll motion. Yep. Sometimes you'll motion to a stack or, or somehow get your guys. But if you want to stay static, this is how you get them open. Watch this play. DK Metcalf's only role is to make this defender go over the top. So he's really a pick. He's going to run here. And then he's going to turn into a corner route. And you never know. If he gets dropped, he might he might get the ball. But the read is for Lockett right here. He's going to sell flat and then come back underneath on a slant route. And as soon as this defender goes over the top, he wins. It's an easy, easy throw and catch. Right? Watch how they execute this to perfection. DK runs inside. He makes the DB go over the top. Lockett puts his foot down as soon as he feels it. And... Gino in the pocket does a great job. Watch him hold his eyes. He's got to beat this. This is the hook player, which is technically the rat player. I mean, the rat player, the whole player. Like, he's the one that could take this away. Watch Gino's eyes. Looks right. He knows it's man. He knows he's going to have what he wants. He freezes the rat player just enough to get basically an explosive play on third and four. First third down in the game. Watch Gino's eyes right here. This is who he has to hold. Great job by Gino, just freezing his feet a little bit, knowing that if the receivers run this the way that they've been taught all week long versus press man coverage, like I'm going to have the slant to lock it. It's just total execution. A really nice job early in the game of the Seahawks executing a third down plan. What I love about doing the show is on a weekly basis, I actually like visualize play sheets that these play callers have on the sideline. And you can tell like this is probably one of the plays near the top of the list in, you know, Waldron's box of third and fourth down conversions. That's the section of this video. Colt, we now go to near the end of the second quarter, a fourth and two with more trickeration and disguise in order to get players open. Much like the previous play, like you're expecting man coverage on fourth and two, right? So what the Seahawks do is a little tricky right they put Lockett in the backfield here's Charbonnet and here's their other two receivers here's the tight end okay it's a different personnel group it's a, a weird formation it's a receiver in the backfield and, and it's a speed quick. Right quick. Yep. yeah so it's designed to like if I have Tyler Lockett and I'm normally a corner lining up outside and I can't find him now wh wh how do I find him how do I get to him it's designed to keep them off guard, much like what the Ravens did last week, right? So Seahawks are calling this expecting total man coverage. This route is designed to get man coverage. What you're going to get is three, like, basically um, blocks for Tyler Lockett, right? They're not going to technically block anybody, but it's three rubs on all these defenders. So if this is the guy who has Tyler Lockett, he has to go through one, two, three different rub routes to cover the flat route in man. So it's a it. great it's a great play yeah. versus man coverage, right? <clears throat> so but what you're gonna get here is it ends up not being man coverage, right? The Browns do a great job of disguising. They play zone coverage. Nobody runs with the shallows. And so for Gino like, okay, I'm ready to throw it. I'm ready to throw it. Oh, wait, it's zone. 
I have two guys jumping the number one route in my progression. I've got to put my foot down, and now it's up to these guys when it's zone coverage to find the soft spot in the zone. He's going to sit here. He's going to sit here. He's going to sit here. So it's still an okay play versus zone coverage. Not ideal, but okay. You can salvage the play, and I think Gino does a great job here of recognizing, oh, snap, we went on the speed break quick. It's supposed to be man. Oh, it's not man. Let me find my zone receivers. And DK does a great job of just sitting down right here on the hash marks. He does a nice job sitting. And Gino, as he's backpedaling, backpedaling, like, oh, shoot, it's not man, finding his guy on a fourth and two conversion. I think it's just a really good call by the Browns' defense of switching up their man-to-zone coverage, breaking some of their tendencies that they've put on tape over the last several weeks, and just an even better job by Gino of recognizing its zone. Where's my checkdowns? Where's my zone soft spot answers? And he finds DK for a first down. Yeah, can we see this from the reverse angle? Because this is such a cool and calm play from Gino when it's kind of chaos and not something you expect to drift back about 10 yards and throw off your back foot to a player who's just sitting in this soft area. Absolutely love this. Great job by Gino, right? I use the word great too many times, but this really is a, a really nice job by by Gino, recognizing it's not man coverage. I've got three picks to get Tyler Lockett open in the flat. Oh, snap. It's zone. And immediately he whips his head back. He finds DK Metcalf for a first down on fourth and two off the speed break quick. you got to recognize when you're running speed break quick plays, you're running it in hopes of whatever the defense's tendency of playing that coverage is, right? They're hoping it's man. Oh, it's not. Well, now i got to make a split-second decision with the ball in my hand to find my zone answer, and Gino does that on fourth and two in a big-time play. Okay, we've gone through the short yardage third and fourth down conversions. Whenever anyone thinks of the Seattle Seahawks, they, they think about shot plays. I mean, DK Metcalf, Tyra Lockett, Geno Smith, some of the best in the league at this. Take us through one of them because it's not just, hey, my guy is bigger and faster than yours. It has to be created and generated in a way. When you're calling plays as a coordinator, you get around midfield, like it's first and five. Like the playbook is wide open for you at this point. So I love the fact that they're taking a shot right here, being aggressive. There's a couple of things I want to talk about. I want to watch the protection, right? This is a unique formation, right? The running back is not in the eye right here. He's not in the dot. Like he's plussed over. Hey, that's number one. You're tied in is off the ball here and your Z receivers on the ball. Okay. And then you got a stack to the field with DK Metcalf as the point man in the alley. So I love this formation alignment. You don't see this very often. And, and what we're going to get is a, is a motion here as a distraction. He's not getting the ball. He's not involved in protection. Like this is a five man protection with rib and lick. Like we talked about last week, He's going to chip the defensive end here, and the tight end is going to chip the defensive end here, and you're going to get five protectors up front. So it's just a five-man protection, and you're getting five guys out on routes, right? So really cool design here that I feel like we need to recognize. The best part about this play when you run this is you're going to get a fly motion as a distraction, which the Seahawks did a bunch in this game. And it's just a drop back pass by Gino, and you're getting a go ball from a big, tall, strong, one of your best receivers, DK Metcalf, from a cut and reduced split, right? Normally he's lined up out here running a go route, and there's just, it's a still a great throw, but there's less grass. When you can get your big target here in a condensed split running a go ball on a corner, like you have so much grass out here to take advantage of. And then watch watch how the Browns play this, right? So he's pressed right here. He's off. You always want to see DBs on different levels because you don't want to get picked, just like what happened on the third and fourth play, right? So this is a good adjustment by the Browns. Well, when the receiver runs here, now he goes. Now he's in a bind. Like his leverage is bad. He's given DK a inside or outside release from a cut split like all of a sudden just a simple motion now gets you the best leverage that you could ask for 
So as you watch this play out, good fly motion. You get your chip protection by the running back. And then it's just a straight drop back throw by Geno Smith. And he holds the safety and DK gets separation and big time explosive play all the way down to the 10 yard line. Like the design helps this out so much. And you know, this is one of the reasons why the Seahawks beat the number one defense in the league this week. I even love Zach Charbonnet being offset in the backfield to make it even a tighter angle to go help on Miles Garrett rather than just, you know, purely behind the quarterback. It's just like the little details every single week. These little details to me are the identifier of weeks of preparation leading up to, you know, the entire season and how it falls out from there. Look at this. I mean, there's no running back in the eye formation here, right? He's offset and you're going to get help here. You're going to get help here. And it's just a five man protection for one, two, three, yep. four, five rushers, right? So it's five on five. But technically, you're getting double teams and still getting those guys out. So solid protection, known man coverage. Based on the fly motion, you get even better leverage on DK Metcalf, who's in a cut reduced split. And now Gino just has to drop back, hold the safety in the middle of the field, and he's got exactly what he wants. And they execute it well. I love when offenses look different, even if it's you know two or three plays a game because of a certain formation or personnel grouping they put out there. Colt, this has been on my radar since week one from Shane Waldron because we rarely see this two tight end offsetting one running back out of shotgun or pistol throughout the league. Yet, whenever you watch the Seahawks on a weekly basis, they do it two or three times. And Colt, I want you to guide the people through almost this evolution of a formation that we're seeing from Shane Waldron because each of these plays each week are coming out of Again, a similar formation, but the results and the actual play are very different. And to me, I understand that it's just two or three plays a week, but this is the identity of Shane Waldron to me. Like I'm learning more about him as a play call, play caller rather than, you know, just the same vanilla stuff on a weekly basis. We've run what we've run and the defense just has to stop it. Yeah, week one, play two, right? This is a pretty cool formation. A lot of things you can do out of it. Pistol. Just like Josh described, two tight ends back there. Fun little wrinkle, right? Let me throw this out there and see, see what we get. You get base defense. You get two blockers on the edge. You get four hands on Aaron Donald. Like, pretty cool little play design. Now we're in week two, right? Same little formation wrinkle. Back in the pistol. Two tight ends here, right? Base defense again, lots of options, lots of things you can do out of this. They run a little keeper, hit the tight end down into five, right? Like cool little wrinkle. And I love that because again, week one, we saw run play. Week two, play action pass to three levels of the right side. And then we continue to grow from here. So we go into week three against Carolina. Same little formation. The only thing the running back's not in a pistol, but he motions around. And they end up running a sweep, right, for 10 or 11 yards, right? So, again, you're seeing this show up. You're, you know, he's documenting what defenses I'm getting, how they're playing it, right? A little bit different wrinkle each week so far. Yeah, and if I'm noticing it, defenses are noticing it, right? So they have certain ways they're going to play this. And each time they put it out there, it's almost a different play and a different result from it, which I love. All right, now we're into week four against the Giants in New York. Same formation, pops up early in the game. And you're going to get a little motion by the Y. Again, the yo-yo motion by the running back. And a cool little keeper off of this for nice little gain early in the game, right? So, so many different things they can do out of this formation. Different shifts and motions. Like, you're seeing it week to week. It's pretty cool. Now we're down three, fourth quarter against the Browns. And here comes our running back, two tight ends in the backfield. Another cool wrinkle off of this. And now you got a cool little screen with two lead blockers. Um, as you're backed up, you know, this isn't a great place to be, right? Playing the Browns defense, long field. But I love the design. I love the double team on the nickel. And 
you get 10 yards backed up, sweet play. Like I just, I love the compliment each week to building off of this formation group, this personnel group, and you never know what you're going to see from it week to week. And you're normally getting a pretty good play out of this formation set. Yeah. And I know it's again, so small, these aren't explosive plays, but Colt, if we ever do get to talk to Shane Waldron and I'm going to hold you to that one day, Colt, um, I'm going to ask him about this because no one else is running this. And again, we see it on a weekly basis and he's just adding a new wrinkle to it. And that's just allowing me to like peek through the keyhole of almost his creativity and his decision-making process, which I totally love. Yeah. Shane is definitely creative. Like I love all the things that he's um, doing on offense from helping the quarterback make decisions before he gets the ball in his hand, right? Like this is a unique formation, a cool little uh, shift in motion off of it every week. And now it's a free completion for the quarterback, right? right. I'm throwing this out there. We look, this is a, this is a screen with two lead blockers on the nickel. Like it's going to be a positive play, like turn your brain off and make the throw. Like those are things that Shane allows Gino to do week in and week out. Okay. So we opened with third and fourth down conversions in short yard situations. We've gone to shot plays. Now we've gone to this formation and personnel creativity, obviously Colt, the Seahawks are known for running the football. They've invested back-to-back -back years, second round picks in the running game. So Shane Waldron, it's not just a passing game expert. We also need the running game to factor in here. Yeah. And they made some big plays in the run game this week against the Browns. A lot of cat and mouse going on here between Shane and between Schwartz, the defensive coordinator for the Browns. There comes times in games where you're saying, okay, I know it's man coverage, but like, you're playing a pretty good job against us in man coverage. Like a lot of my concepts, a lot of my plays, like you, you've gloved them, right? The Browns even played man to one side of the field, zone to the other side of the field. Like there's a lot of things going back and forth. So for Shane, he's saying, okay, well, I'm going to go into like some of my run game that I've chosen for man coverage, right? I'm going to, I'm going to punch you with a pass. I'm going to punch you with a run. And then like, I'm just going to keep changing it up. You're going to see this run show up twice. This, this is in the first 15, so play four of the game, right? We know, all the scheme listeners know that this is man coverage, right? Man, man. Safety's rotated down, tied in man, man. Okay, here's your two, like, hook players, right? One of them has the running back in man. The other one becomes a hole player, a wrap player. And then you got your post safety. Right, so this run is designed for man coverage. He's going to get this guy out of there off the motion. Right, we're going to get a speed motion here, and we're just going to uh, run a simple zone scheme. He's out of there, so all the defenders are going to have their backs turned. They don't know if it's a run play. They don't know if it's a pass play. Like they're covering their guy. The safety's the only one that knows what's going on in the backfield. So here we go. Here comes the motion. We're running outside zone <clears throat> stretch. The linebackers crash their gaps, right? And the Seattle Seahawks offensive line does a great job cutting off the edge. And, the, you know, anytime you can get your running back one-on-one -on -one with the free safety, like oh, yeah. that's a win. That's a huge win in the run game. That's all you, that's all you can do. There's never going to be a hat for a free safety. Okay. So when you watch this from the back end, right? The Seahawks do a great job. The linebackers are filling their gaps here, here. He's blocking out. They're getting a double team here up to this linebacker. They're double teaming here up to this linebacker. And the motion and Geno's fake are responsible for this guy. Okay, so you're getting really good double teams up to that backer, really good double teams up to this backer. And if you get a hat on a hat on everybody, the only player that can make the play is the post safety. Right. So understanding it's man coverage, understanding like, hey, the Browns are doing a pretty good job of covering us. Let's get to our best run play. OK, it's its own for everybody, but it's versus man coverage. And he knows it's going to be a big hitter if we can cut off the edge. Right. Watch this guy. I want you to watch him. This is the guy who could take this play away. Right. But because of the motion. 
and because of the keeper by Gino, it settles his feet just enough to like, okay, wh- who who's got what? Now he crashes it is too late. See what I mean? The left guard gets up on the mic. They freeze the feet of the defensive end. And now, I mean, it's a pretty big gap. Oh, yeah. And you get exactly what you want, right? You get your running back on the free safety, and it turns into a 45-yard gain. The Browns got a three-point lead. They're playing good defense. Not a whole lot of pass game is being generated by the Seahawks. They're having to scheme them up. You know, these third-down plays versus man that we've watched, you know, getting DK Metcalf into cut splits. Like, there's a lot of things that are going on in this game. Well, let's go back to our bread and butter, okay? Same idea. We're going to motion the guy over. We're going to run our zone play. The linebackers are going to crash. Gino's going to do a good job of holding this guy with his fake. And now we got exactly what we want. A running back on a post safety for a 21-yard gain in a critical, critical situation uh, down by three late in the second half. Right? Just a good design a good calming run that everybody feels comfortable with and it's great versus man coverage. Really good job by the right side of the line here. Like they're responsible for this guy. So he's going to give presence on the three technique work up to the linebacker. He's going to know that he's getting help from the inside, try to square this guy up and he's ready for the cutback off of him. And all the DBs are playing man coverage, so it's hard for them to see that this is a run. they got to play the keeper, right? Seattle does a nice job of running keepers off these same actions. You, If you watch this game, you'll see this same motion, this same run play with a keeper coming out the backside for a couple big plays in this game. So it looks the same. It feels the same to the defense. Like this is just being one step ahead and understanding, like, let's give our receivers a breath in man and let's run – our simple zone run game and it creates some two explosive plays in some big situations. Yeah. I I love how Seattle's handling the season to me, defensive success year over year is not always sticky despite there being the same personnel because many things can happen, you know, injury luck, so on and so forth. But like within a season, it can be. And right now the Seahawks have a top five defense and we know how much they've invested along the offense and draft picks over recent years. And then the trade deadline, bringing in someone like Leonard Williams, who Pete Carroll has a lot of history with just to me is them understanding that this is their window to win. And I actually think those exist in the NFL and this with everything, all the stars aligning, some players on rookie contracts, some veterans at their peak, this is the time. And so I I really think based on what we've seen from Shane Waldron, the personnel that they have too, when they play at their best, um, they are one of, if not arguably, the best team in the NFC right now. They always have answers. I think Gino has to play a little bit better moving totally. forward. But Shane is doing a great job of giving him answers to the test before he gets the ball in his hand. He's got good players around him. And you look what he did in the last part of this game. It's a two-minute drive. There's 157 left in the game. They've got two timeouts, and they're down by three. He marches them all the way down for a touchdown, like a walk-off to win the game, right? So Gino has that capability. He just got to trust all the things that Shane's doing, trust the run game. The run game has been phenomenal for them, right? Like they build everything off of that, their play actions, their keepers. And when they get in drop-back situations, like Shane's going to get, you know, DK Metcalf and cut splits to take shots, like just like we saw uh, in Tampa Bay when we – broke them down, like getting Mike Evans in the cut split running go balls. Like those are like almost impossible to cover, right? Tyler Lockett is balling. He's making all kinds of plays, right? He's their speed motion guy. He's their gadget guy. And then if Jackson Smith and Jigma can figure out his role and keep getting better and better and better each week, I mean, he caught the walk-off touchdown uh, against the Browns. Like I see them improving week to week and being – you know, they're, they're going to be in the mix when it's all said and done. Don't look at the NFC West right now. I mean, they're leading. So it's going to be fun to keep our eye on the Seahawks as we move forward. Yeah. Basically what we're saying is it's one of those teams that if they get hot at the right time, 
they definitely have the pieces to make a ton of noise when we reach December, January, and maybe even February. All right. As Colt mentioned, we have plenty of other episodes that you need to check out. The Ravens, their offense, Ben Johnson and the Lions, the Buffalo Bills inside the red zone. I won't spoil them all for you. Just go and watch them on the channel. And don't worry, we'll be back here every single week with another episode of Scheme. And maybe, just maybe, focusing in on some quarterback prospects in the 2024 NFL Draft very, very soon. We'll see you all next time.